Hi guys and welcome to Cultonomics. My name is Paul Hanley and today I'm going to be chatting to you about the costs of inflation. In this video we're going to discuss the implications of inflation in an economy and the cost thereof. So the first thing to note is that inflation sometimes causes what we call an inflation tax and this is when a government raises revenue by printing money and by printing money what tends to happen is the value of money actually falls therefore people on fixed wages tend to experience a reduction in wealth so they dilute the value of money in that case now if this goes a small bit further it can tend towards something called hyperinflation and this is a period of extreme and accelerating increase in the price level. So some people would define this as more than 50% inflation per month. We have some examples of this even most recently in Venezuela where, where the inflation rate was estimated to be 130,000 uh, percent in 2018. So that was in a modern economy in South America, hyperinflation, which is inflation gone rampant, usually due to excessive government deficits and excessive money supply printing. So over printing of money supply in that case. Now, these are the extreme cases, but generally inflation can result in moderate inconveniences and costs in the modern economy. The first one here is actually a fallacy, which is referring to a fall in the purchasing power of money. So inflation is supposed to dilute or reduce the value of money as we discussed at the outset. However, this can be a fallacy in modern economies because where the prices of goods and services go up, what we tend to find is the wages of people working in those industries where prices are going up tends to rise as well. So if prices go up and in turn inflation goes up and variables such as this, well then no one is any worse off. So we call that an inflation fallacy if people's wages are going up as much as the money supply and inflation in the economy. Number two, inflation can call shoe leather costs. So this is the inconvenience of having to take out money if you leave it in the bank during times of inflation and situation of in the extreme case people not just leaving money in the bank and having to go in and take that out but actually not holding money in the domestic currency and having to exchange it for other currencies that are holding their value so this would be highly inconvenient to people and we would refer to this as shoe leather costs of inflation there are also number three the menu costs of inflation where firms must change the pricing levels of their products and their services continually if inflation is rising. So they may have to print off new catalogs, they may have to inform people, change uh, prices on the website, deal with complaints and so on. So all the inconvenience of changing prices due to inflation we refer to as menu costs. Number four, inflation can also cause relative price variability and a misallocation of resources. So if we base our allocation of resources on the pricing system in free markets, any changes in these prices uh, will affect the allocation of resources. So you may have, for example, a restaurant sets its prices at the start of the year and as prices change over time in terms of inflation, their product becomes either overpriced or underpriced in the market and therefore the pricing system is not working in relation to that restaurant. We also have number five, inflation induced tax distortions. And I can provide an example of this. So if we take an example of capital gains tax, that's the capital gain is the profit made by selling an asset for more than its purchase price and then tax is imposed on this profit that you earn. So for example, if you were to buy a stock in a company, let's say Google, at the start of, uh, let's say 2015 for 10 euro and over the course of five years in 2020, that stock has gone up to 40 euro. So you bought it for 10 and it goes up to 40. What you've made in that case is a capital gain of 30 euro for the, ax uh, for the asset 
and the tax will be based on that 30 euro. The problem here is that prices may have gone up over this five year period. So if prices doubled, for example, the 10 euro that you spent on your Google stock is now in terms of purchasing power, the equivalent of 20 euro. So in that case there, you have made a gain of 30 euro in the stock value. However, 10 euro of that is depreciated away due to the increase in the price level due to inflation. So if inflation has doubled and the value of your money has gone from 10, 10 to 20, that means that we actually have to take away 10 euro from the increase in the value of your stock. So it would be the 30 euro minus 10 giving you a capital gain of 20 euro. However, you are taxed on the 30. So that is a cost imposition of inflation. Number six then is confusion and inconvenience. So with inflation rising, uh, it's oftentimes very difficult to work out exact profit levels for investors to know in terms of the revenue that a firm is earning because inflation can impact on the prices, the revenue and the profits and so on of companies. And number seven, inflation, if it is unexpected, can call a re cause a redistribution of wealth. So again, let's take an example here. If there was 10,000 euro taken out as a loan by a student and the interest rate was 5%, they might have to pay back that over a five year period. If inflation rises unexpectedly, so let's say it was at a normal uh, around 2% level and it increased up to 5, 6% unexpectedly, what would happen is the debtor is better off uh, in that case. The reason for that is they will be paying back money in five years time that is w worth less than when the loan was taken out. And in this case, if inflation jumps up to five or six percent, it's worth five or six percent less that money that they pay back to the bank. In that case, the debtor wins out. There is an increase in debtor wealth in that case. We could have the alternative situation where inflation was at 2% and it maybe drops into deflation. It goes down to minus 1%. In that case, the creditor, the bank is going to win out because you're going to pay them back money that's actually worth more now. So the bank can pay for more things with that money that they loaned you out five years ago. So in that case, the wealth of the creditor increases. So what inflation can cause if it's unexpected is a redistribution of wealth, either to savers or to borrowers in that case there. Finally, deflation comes along with a range, range of additional issues. So deflation again is negative inflation, so when prices actually fall in the economy. Now what this can impact on especially is consumption, so household consumption. People knowing that prices will reduce may delay consumption of larger items such as fridges and washing machines and TVs. Secondly, there could be an impact in terms of savings as saving rates may reduce as interest rates come down to try and fend off this deflation so it mightn't be worthwhile saving anymore. Thirdly, there is an increase in the real cost of debt repayments when there's deflation and this may cause uh, firms and households to take out less money and to invest less as well. And it's tougher to reduce real wages during deflation because even keeping uh, wages at the same level means that the real cost of doing business actually goes up during deflation. I hope you call back to Cultnomics soon. Bye for now.